Another episode of Airy Asia Hour. My name is Elliot Tong from Airy, and I will be moderating our session for today. So this episode is going to be a little different with our past episodes and also from the Airy Tech Talk Live because we've invited guest cinematographers from different parts of Asia to talk about their experience, their expertise in cinematography, and using the signature primes. They'll be giving us a glimpse of their craft and their approach to visual storytelling. I'm excited to learn from these master DPs. All right, I think it's time to meet our first guest. He's based in Hong Kong and he's a, in China. And he started his career as a gaffer in the 90s, then went on to become a director, cinematographer in the 2000s. Since then, he has shot more than 30 feature films, including critically acclaimed films Internal Affairs 2 and 3, Rise of the Legend, and Rigo Mortis. He has won numerous awards, nominated for several cinematography awards as well, including the Hong Kong Film Awards, Asian Film Awards, and more. Here with us today at the Airy Asia Hong Kong office is none other than DP Man Ching Ng. So welcome. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we wanted to first ask you is how's the production right now in Hong Kong and China? Can you tell us uh, what are some of the latest projects? Uh, because of the pandemic, many films have stopped shooting. Now the pandemic has stopped. 反而就多了很多電影慢慢復工了,當然因為疫情期間很多人都留在家裡去上網看電影,當然到現在現在很多新的電影公司,即舊的電影製作公司,他們開始慢慢製作網上電影會多了一個新的發展。Okay, so yeah. Due to the, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, production has stopped for a while, but now we are still slowly seeing a pickup uh, of more production starting in Hong Kong as well. So since a lot of people are using their time at home watching uh, internet streaming movies, so there is actually now a new trend in Hong Kong to, uh, to watch these so-called net movies. So we are seeing a little bit of a production trend in that sector. So, okay, so thank you for that. So like, um, so you've been in the industry for over 30 years and mm -hmm. we're, we all known to come to really like your work. So how has cinematography changed when it comes to using it as a visual storytelling medium? Actually, 最多可能一部機器,不知道鏡頭,拍部電影,可能會有機器量比較多 so yeah, in the olden days, uh, we remember shooting with just a camera and five lenses. That's all they gave us. Uh, this is back way back. So I guess with, uh, with the industry growing bigger and bigger, we have more tools to work with but nowadays. We, we have a lot more equipment that we could use to make our films better and better, such as cranes, uh, even cable cams, even um, different types of, or even aerial drones. They're, what is at our fingertips has, has gotten a lot more, so we, that is the major difference in making movies nowadays. So, okay, so like, um, uh, 
so for your recent action film, I know you've just did a movie uh, with the really talented director Roy Chow. It's called Knockout. Uh, it's a, an amazing looking film, and you and you shot this movie with the signature primes. And and can you tell us something about the, your experience? Oh. 因為當時係誒，因為二零一八年啦，咁就我第一次準備去用呢個誒阿力曬嘅 L F 機器，咁我去到汽油公司啦，咁誒，咁我個老闆就 present 我，誒誒試下用呢個誒 Three Chair Palm 嘅 lens 啊，咁樣咁，咁我咦我話試下啦，咁裝上去一睇，咦誒，發覺係好成個畫面好好立體啊，睇出嚟係好個好通透嘅感覺。咁同埋另外佢個個光圈咧，一點八光圈係大光圈啊，攝影師係最中意啦。咁同埋誒，因為我呢個動作片好多會有手提啊，即、就、係、是、拍攝。咁啊，佢個鏡頭比一般嘅平時 pair 嘅鏡佢輕三分之一左右。咁我而家咁我可以用 match 呢個 L F 機器啊，咁我就選用呢、這個呢支呢個 S P 嘅鏡頭。OK， so it turns out when this is back in 2018 and、uh, this is when I first Uh, got the project to do knockout, and at the time the Alexa LF was just came out. So we we went we visited the equipment house, and the equipment house it recommended the system to us. This using large format to shoot this film, and when I first got my hands on the signature primes, uh, I was very surprised to see that many many different uh, great qualities, such as it has a really large aperture, which is T one point eight, and also. We we feel that it's very um, three dimensional. It makes the characters actors look very three dimensional when we when we did the test. And also, it wasn't very heavy because we had to handhold. We know that we had a lot of、uh, handholding、um, of the camera in this film because it's kind of an action film. So we and after the test, we really fell in love with it, and that's、uh, that's why we 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 chose the signature primes. Okay, so thanks for that.、Uh, so, can you tell us、um, uh, also, like, how was your experience using the signature primes in the, in a sense that、uh, when you got to the real shooting, because during the test you you like what it's doing to in the test, but when you actually shoot the movie on set, how was it? Was did it give you a surprise? Uh, 因為我第一次用呢個 L F 機器啊，配合呢個 S P 鏡頭，咁我嗰個感覺佢就係、是，咦誒，佢、呃、同我之前用嘅 P L 鏡頭個分別就佢個景別唔同啊，個 size 大細會有有個唔同，因為我要要慢慢再適應翻，咁我同埋係佢個景深好淺啊，變咗個個個個嗰件物體啊，好立體啊，完全係你覺得係即係呢個。個層次感啊，完全係有令同之前嘅完全唔同。咁佢嘅好處，我係覺得佢係令到我好容易表達到嗰、那個嗰件個主體，同我背景佢嗰種誒 overus 啊，嗰種嗰種 soft 嘅程度係好柔和、好舒服。Okay, so yeah, um, when we first shot with the signature primes on set, it it gave us a really impressive Shallow depth of field feeling because I used to shoot with、uh, Super 35, and it's kind of one of our first, my first experience shooting large format. So the format itself, its marriage with the large format lenses, really gave an, a unique look that I've never seen before in terms of the shallow depth of field, in terms of、uh, how it created sort of a really three-dimensional layer.、Uh, Of what's in front of the camera and what's in the background, I, I, I really like the way it handled、uh, the bokeh. You know, it's very, very ple pleasing、um, when we shot with it. So,、um, so they, I understand that in the signature prime also has like some other unique features. I we wanted to see if you use some of these、uh, impressive features. During your shoot, like, do you remember some scenes that you were using the the SP lenses that that lent itself to some of these unique features? Oh, 
我第一次用佢呢個鏡頭就係我發覺有好處就係我喺大反差嘅時候，佢嘅黑位出得好靚啊，同埋個演員個面口啊、個膚色啊，好個 skin tone 都好好好通透，同埋佢。有好處又又喺啲有 fair 嘅環境底下咧，佢同平時嘅鏡頭佢唔會好影響到個演員個演繹啊，唔會話誒，即係令到演員即係 fog 咗睇唔清楚啊咁。佢又同埋啲好同埋個膚色方面咧，佢又好細緻啊，同埋顏色嘅高個還原度好高，同你出即係同你肉眼睇嘅顏色係一一樣，唔會話偏咗某種顏色啊，即係偏冷啊咁，係完全還原到正常嘅顏色俾到你。So I really like the way SP lenses handle blacks. It's it's a very very solid black, especially in high contrast shots. And also I really like the way SP lenses handle the skin tone. Uh, I felt that the skin tone is very very pleasing, very soft. It also was very much close to how we look at the actors. Skin in real life, so it, the, there was almost no color differentiation after we shot it on SP and seeing it in real life. So that was very impressive for us. So, like, uh, well, thank you, thank you for that. So after you, after you shooting one time with the uh, signature primes, do you see yourself shooting more movies with it? Uh, 啊，會啊，會，因為我覺得呢個呢個鏡頭俾我好全面性啊。佢除咗大反差啊，譬如歐多啊，拍嘅嘢係好個出嚟個個顏色效果都好柔和啊，完全係基本上你唔會話需要嘥好多時間後期去去去調色，佢都俾到翻俾翻原原本嘅顏色你。咁同埋佢個好處係一一來輕啦，我拍動作片嘅時候，即係或者手提嘅時候係非常靈活同輕巧咯。Yes, I, I actually would love to use them again, uh, simply because what I repeated before is it's got a great handling of color rendition. It's very true to life, uh, almost no loss of, of color differences, and also its weight. It's very, because in Hong Kong, we often shoot a lot of action films and we have to handhold a lot. So uh, the weight of the signature primes was a big plus for us. Okay, so, um, well, thank you. Man Cheng, thank you so much for today. Um, we really, it's been a great, insightful uh, hearing from you. Um, so now, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to move on to our next guest. Sit tight because we have a panel. But, and also I wanted to remind the audience, we're going to have a panel discussion later. So we're actually going to have Man Cheng back to join us for the uh, panel discussion right after this uh, next two presenters. So. Now, joining us today via video call is our next guest, and she's all the way from the Philippines. She's a Manila-based cinematographer with a focus on making feature films that champion the visual narratives of her country. Now, she has a total of 19 feature films on credit, and many have already participated and won various awards both in the Philippines and internationally. She's a pioneering member of the Filipino Cinematographers Society, Lupong in Pilipinong's Cinematographo, and a scholar of ASC Vision Mentorship Program. So please give a warm welcome to our good friend, DP Tay Claymer. Hello. Hi, Tay. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How it's are good you? Good to there? see you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, all the way from the Philippines, and, and uh, it's very interesting. Where, where are you right now? <laughs> I'm actually at home. <laughs> oh, Most okay. Of are. That's what all these Zooms are uh, taking place. Okay, good. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome. So we're very, very interested to know about your work. I mean, you, you, know, you, you have shot 19 feature films, including Tayo, Hulan Buwan, uh, the most famous ones, um, and among others. What's the reason behind choosing to work on these films that you've done? Actually, for each film, it's usually there's a lot of reasons when I accept the project, but I have two major reasons when I accept the project, which is, of course, the most important thing, which is the story. I have to like the story, 
I have to know what the message of the story is and how will it affect the audience. And um, I base on the films that I accept also is are is are the people that I'm going to work with. I mean, uh, film is a collaborative effort, so it should be about the people you're working with as well. Okay, great. So we noticed that you usually shoot your films with airy equipment. Well, thank you for that. Um, so what makes you such a uh, fan of airy? Um, actually, I think 80% of the films that I've made are shot with airy. Um, ever since the Alexa Classic, uh, actually even the Ari uh, 35, um, I like how the camera is renditioning the colors, how organic it looks like, even the ergonomics of how a camera, an Ari camera looks like uh, from the Alexa Classic to the Amira until the large format cameras. I like how it fits every project that I have. And of course, the trust in the camera is there. And that is very important when, you shoot, when you're shooting a film. You have to have a reliable camera. Great, thank you. So now, I really want to know about this latest film that uh, is creating such a huge buzz. It's, it's Issa Pa with Feelings. Uh, it looks amazing. I saw a trailer of it. We really want to know um, how that experience was like. Um, and I understand that you shot that with Signature Primes. Could you tell us about that? Actually, um, it's a mixture of uh, two lenses. Um, when I was starting the project, I really wanted to shoot with a large format, given that it's a, it's, well, it has a budget. It's a project that has a budget and can um, work with that kind of um, setup. And then we use the signature primes mostly on the interiors of our um, condo location. It's actually a studio setup where we had to like have VFX needed at the backgrounds of the, the condo units. And it helped us to have a um, to have the camera and the lens as a combo for this one. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I understand the film. It's about deaf, a deaf couple. I mean, it's about the deaf community. Uh, it's about with feelings, um, and you had to really rely on pure visuals and a lot of the scenes. You know, there was no dialogue, right? So, like, um, how? Like, how, could you tell us something about how you use the lenses, especially signature primes, in, in the visual narrative part? Actually, it's, it's, it's very challenging. As you said, it was a film that requires no dialogue. So it heavily relies on the visual language and the images of the film. Um, the deaf community actually, in general, relies on communicating through visual cues, visual um, sign languages. So we used a lot of um, uh, DMX lighting. We have a lot of harsh lights as well. It's a, a mixture of a lot of things. And I was really surprised how the camera and the lenses um, react to these um, um, designs that we did. Okay. All right. Now, going back to, I mean, I, I know you've Besides features, you, you also did some shorts, and they're really nice. And you also shot a short film called um, Thanatos. It's Thanatos, and you captured it with, uh, at that one, you also did it with Airy Large Format Combo, the Alexa LF. Uh, I think at that time, you used the 47 millimeter signature prime. Um, what, what was that film about? Actually, before It's a Powered Feelings, Thanatos was the first uh, project that I did with the uh, LF and the Signature Primes combo. Um, we use one lens only for the whole film or the whole short film. Uh, we use a 47 mil, which is around like uh, 35 millimeter, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Um, this is a film that uh, was set at the time of the Maguindanao massacre. Um, the story is about a child who is like a middle, uh, middle man or middle boy 
between the militant group and the military. So it's and it was set in the in the place where there's a lot of like natural light. We have a lot of um, um, forests, uh, and we dealt with a lot of like different lighting situations because we only mostly we used a lot of natural lighting for this one. So it's kind of tricky, but it's I was really confident because I was using a. Uh, uh, I think the best camera. So yeah, since it was shot with a, in a, a lot of rural forest setup, I mean, as you said, um, the lens it had to be on an outdoor situation quite a lot. And how how did you find the lens handle the natural light? Um, like, and I understand in Isapa with feelings, it was a lot of indoors, like, um, uh, or in the commercials you've done as well, like. Uh, how did the lens handle these different lighting situations? I was quite really surprised at how good it was. Actually, even way before the camera tests, before shooting an actual location, I was really surprised at how it looks like. It, I haven't seen this kind of look in any of the ARRI lenses before, and it gave me a lot of leeway and creative freedom to work on different kinds of setups, indoor or outdoor, uh, harsh lighting, um, um, soft lighting. It's, it's, it's really wonderful how the signature primes react to the skin tone, the um, different lighting ratios, even, and the, the blacks are really beautiful. Okay. Great. So, like, um, now that you, I understand in the Philippines you work in a lot of commercials and films. Like, uh, do you find the choice of lens differs some every time you shoot a different project? Like, say, film versus commercial, or or even large format versus you know Super Thirty Five. Like, how do you start to choose, make that choice? Mm, usually, it. I don't have any like uh, a different kind of um, shooting setup when when I, it depends on the story um, or what what needs to be what's the visual um, what's the visual look that I am looking for regardless of what medium that is. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's great. I mean, and and of course, we all wanted to know how is it like uh, uh, as a female cinematographer in the Philippines. I mean, that we cannot imagine. Uh, is it fun? Or <laughs> tell us something about that. <laughs> um, definitely, there are the ratio between female cinematographers and male cinematographers in the Philippines is around. Um, uh, 20 to or 20 or 30 percent but but now it's um there are there are there are more female cinematographers now in general compared to like five or like just five years ago um i think women now in the philippines are i think in general not just in the philippines but there are more um women who are opening their eyes and having more opportunities out there for 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 um, both technical and creative work for in, in the image making. Okay, great. So yeah, looking forward to working with you in some project in the future. It sounds really exciting to be making movies in the Philippines. So like, uh, well, thank you, Tay, for sharing with us your work. I'm sure our audience has uh, learned quite, quite a lot from that. Um, so now I'm going to move on to the next guest, but then I'll see you again for the panel discussion. Now, also joining us via video call is our final guest, and he's all the way in Korea. He's a director of photography based in Seoul, starting his career back in the year 2000. So he has, up until now, he has shot an impressive more than 100 commercials and music videos for the famous Korean celebrities that we all love. Um, 
In 2015, he started to work on TV dramas, and we all know how much we love those. One of his best known work is Mr. Sunshine in 2018, and it garnered huge success all over the world, really. Uh, currently, he's the head of Two Thumb Boy Camera Crew and the director of product management for Studio Cube, one of the leading groups of camera system operators in Korea. Now, he's considered uh, one of the most prolific cinematographers in Korea. So now let's welcome DP Hook Jun Yu. Mr. Yu, hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Nice to meet hi. you. Hi. So we have also our, our translator. Thank you so much for joining us today. So let me first ask you, this two thumb boy is very interesting. We want to know what it is. Uh, how is two thumb boy doing these days? And tell you, can you tell us some of the latest projects that you're working on? Okay. 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 교수 생활을 같이 했던 친구들끼리 모여서 어, 서로 부족한 것들을 채워나가면서 작업을 하고 있습니다. 그 요새는 또그 코로나 이런 상황에서 어떻게 하고 계신지 아, 아, 얘기를 해주시면 될것 어, 같아요. 한국도 이제 다전 세계적으로 지금 프로덕션 상황이 이렇게 좋지는 않아요. 좋지는 않은데 어, 다행히게도 어, 투썸 보이즈는 지금 여러 큰 라인업들 드라마나 영화, 뭐 다큐멘터리 같은 데서 라인업들이 내년까지 좀 잡혀져 있는 상태입니다. So first of all, um, thank you for inviting us. And um, in Korea right now, obviously with uh, the COVID-19 situation, um, there's a lot of difficulty in continuing a lot of projects and um, getting the projects started. Um, luckily with uh, Two Thumb Boys, we we were able to be included in the in the um, the projection uh, the project timelines and you know from last year years before so we are still included in a lot of lineups for the TV dramas um, or the original productions um, and we are keep trying to keep ourselves busy um, and uh, with with the current COVID situation um, there are still a lot of um, it's not 100% normal um, compared to before how busy it was and whatnot but we're still trying to um, keep ourselves busy in the situation yes I, I as far as I know um, Korean dramas have not stopped I mean it's always making and always making so like that's a very fortunate situation uh, so now I know that you you get you shot some of the best ones uh, there are two TV dramas that I know uh, that you shot with the signature prime um, this was two, I think last year 2019 it was leverage and also another one called oh my baby so can you tell us something about these two dramas and your experience with signature primes 특히나 이제 작년에 이제 오마이비 레버리지 찍으시면서 특히나 이제 아리 렌즈와 하신 거 경험을 좀 얘기해 주실 수 있는지 레버리지 같은 경우는 소니 피처스가 한국에 처음으로 TV 드라마를 하는 거였고 어 무브먼트가 많았고 카메라가 막 건물 사이를 날아가기도 하고 혹은 뭐 이렇게 액션 씬 있어서 창문을 뛰어내리기도 하고 뭐 이런 씬들이 많아서 어 소니 피처스에서 받았던 그 소니 베니스라는 카메라가 있었고 렌즈를 찾던 도중에 어, 시그니처 프라임을 어, 알았고 근데 그 무게나 그러니까 물리적인 것 때문에 사실을 선택을 했던 렌즈였습니다. 첫 so uh, for the leverage, um, we were faced with the challenges of a lot of movement and there were lots of scenes where the camera had to fly in between the objects and Simply, we were looking for something more physically compatible um, and, and up to the challenges with, with a lot of movements and a lot of, um, you know, hardcore uh, situations with the camera. And uh, this was Sony Pictures' first. Um, yeah, Sony Pictures, the top onto TV. Yeah, Sony Pictures' first TV drama in Korea. And uh, uh, with the camera, we were simply looking for, okay, what kind of lens set can we have in order to match up with 
the really challenging um, um, standard of the, the this TV drama requires. And we decided to go with the Iris Signature Prime because uh, we simply thought, OK, this is um, being lightweight and being up for such like heavy movements. We thought this would be the best choice. Great. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Looks, and But also for the other TV drama called Oh My Baby, that was also, that's a romantic comedy, as I understand. And that's very different with leverage. Like they're totally different styles. So like, uh, how was using the Signature Primes um, on an emotion-driven, you know, uh, rom-com? ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ค่ะอืมมานี่ดังเด้อเด้อ사실은ชิกินิโชไพรเมอร์ <목소리도> 아, 그 다음 작품 로맨틱 코미디에도 굉장히 잘 어울리겠다라고 생각을 해서 조금 음, 선택을 하게 되죠. 시간이 좀 um, so after the experience with leverage, actually we were able to experience how lightweight it was and how good um, it was situated to shoot something so challenging as leverage, very um, heavy handheld driven films and a lot of movement. However, uh, we were very surprised at the end of the production um, how this lens was able to capture such delicate and um, elegant tones from the actor's skins and also um, the outdoor scenes and quite frankly the quality uh, blew me away and I thought for the next project I'm definitely going to uh, try the same set of lenses because I already remember from leverage that in in you know um, given the physical lightweight and how advanced it was and how uh, how good it felt shooting such challenging scenes that it was still able to capture such luxurious and elegant and really delicate tones of the actors such warmth and sometimes just uh, a really really great capturing of the natural light outdoors and that's why uh, I decided to shoot um, with the, the set of lenses for Oh My Baby. Great. I, I guess all I could say to that is Oh My Baby. I wanted to see this again. Uh, uh, every time I'm going to watch these uh, TV dramas, I'm going to think about you now, <laughs> the way you use the signature primes. So now, besides TV dramas, and of course we all know, we all love K-pop, we all watch a lot of the music videos that are in Korea. So like, uh, I understand that you shot Momoland's music video, uh, it's called Thumbs Up, also with this, these lenses. Um, was there a different approach in terms of uh, using the lenses for music video comparing to uh, uh, TV dramas? There's a music video that many people saw, but the music video is the R E Five that you use and the drama is used. Well, there are different genres. Ah, what is it? Ah, ah, ah. 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 우리가 충분한 데이터들이 갖고 있어서 항상 어느 정도 이상의 퀄리티를 유지할 수가 있는데 이 드라마나 혹은 영화 현장에서는 수많은 변수들이 작용을 하기 때문에 실질적으로 어, 렌즈군들을 선택했을 때 폭들이 항상 그 뮤직비디오나 이런 데서는 우리가 쓰는 아 맞아 네, 울트라 프라임이나 이런 것들로도 충분한 좋은 퀄리티를 낼수 있는데 실질적으로 영화나 드라마에선 더 좋은 성능을 가진 것들을 가지지 않으면 좀 힘든 부분들이 있더라고요. 음, 그런 뮤직비디오에서 제가 지금 이 아리 음. 시그니처 프라임이나 음. 이런 거를 쓰시면서 음. 거기에 대해서 다른 렌즈를 쓰셨을 때와 다른 점도 있었는지 음. 제가 한 번에 음. 어, 잘 이해를 못했어요. 일단 그러니까 음. 완전 다른 그러니까 드라마 뮤직비디오 아, 네, 드라마 뮤직비디오의 다른 점과 그리고 아. 또이 어쨌든 시그니처 프라임이라는 음, 세트에 대해서 음. 이걸 이제 뮤직비디오에 쓰셨을 때는 아. 어떤 실질적으로 어, 뮤직비디오에 100% 나가서 쓰진 않았어요. 쓰진 음. 않았는데 기회가 되면 이제 써볼 음. 수 있는 네네. 그런 형태겠죠. Uh, so there's a um, uh, there's a difference in the music video set in working on music videos and working on TV dramas. For example, in Korea. 
um, there's such long and rigorous uh, time for pre-production for music videos. And that means in Korea, music video productions are able to maintain um, certain kind of standard and certain kind of quality, uh, no matter which camera or which set of lenses that you use. Um, usually you see very high quality results coming out of the K-pop music video scenes, and that is because the, the systemically um, certain uh, set of rules uh, um, ensure certain uh, level of, of quality in results. However, um, uh, uh, well, because of that, um, choosing RA is more based on the creative choices rather than the um, the limitations that other lenses have. For example, in, in TV sets or movie sets, um, we are often required to choose RE because of how lightweight it is and or because how it, it, it can be the only one that, that fits our needs, for example. Um, but in music video, uh, we're just more free in terms of uh, our reasons for choosing RE because uh, simply because we know the results will already be of certain um, standard and therefore um, in a way it's it's more um, freeing and, um, in terms of our experience of choosing RE lenses. Well, thank you so much. That was really helpful. I mean, I'm so glad to hear from you the differences between uh, these two medium. Um, so, well, thank you so much. Kamzamida, thank you, DP, uh, Mr. Yu, and also Mr. Lee, our translator. Thank you so much. So before before we move on to the panel discussion, let's bring back Tay, and let's uh, and also Menching uh, to the live stream. So we'll, so welcome back, guys. So let's have uh, our split screen. So for all the viewers out there, if you have a question, uh, now is the time. Uh, for our guests today, now is the time you can leave them in the chat box. And if you do that, and uh, our team, we will be uh, able to uh, list your questions out and be able to ask our panels. So it can be about signature primes, it can be about their individual works uh, that you've seen, uh, their cinematography in general, uh, anything that you would like to ask our guests today. So remember to mention who your question is targeted for or addressed to. Uh, lastly, ARI ambassadors are here to help you, our team behind the scenes. We can do our translation as well, like right on the spot. So you can ask your, your questions in your native language. Feel free to leave your question in your native language, OK? So let's get started. Um, so uh, now, the first question, it could be for any, every one of us. Um, so how important is it to choosing the right type of lens for a film? That's a really good question. How does it affect the way you tell your story? This is about choosing the right type of lenses. So I guess, why don't we maybe mention, you want to give us a hint about how you choose your lens to tell the story of a film? Well, 那個故事內容和場戲的環境和演員怎樣演繹,我再用不同的鏡頭,用另一個不同的拍攝手法去拍它。So actually we always start with uh, analyzing the script, analyzing the story, meetings with the director, and also who the actors are. Uh, all this depends, it's, it's, it's about uh, the lens choice uh, uh, as we do our tests, and as we go move into production. And maybe Tay, do you wanna? Yeah, actually it, uh, of course you start with the script, with the story, and then uh, what impact do you want to show to your audience? Uh, choosing a lens is very important and how you want to see depth, how you want to see space, how you want the audience to feel when they are watching your story, your, your visual story. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Yu, how do you choose your lens for the film? Mm, well, 이제 유행을 많이 타고 있어서 뭔가 특별한 것들을 좀 많이 도전하려고 하는 선택 
생각을 많이 하려고 해요. 그래서 시그니처 프라이 같은 경우에 특히 아, 그 커스텀 할수 있는 뒤에 마운트나 이런 것들 때문에 굉장히 아, 여러 가지를 막 버전을 해봤던 경험이 있었어요. Obviously, um, choosing the lens is very important part of the production, and we put a lot of emphasis on it. Um, personally, um, also um, now that recently in 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 few years, the Korean contents, whether it be TV dramas or movies, have been um, going abroad quite a lot, and the growth has been quite dramatic. And so, for me, it was also important to not only choose the right set of films. For the story or the um, the emotion of, of each project, it was also important for me to choose the set of lenses or the set of equipments, for that matter, that could push the boundaries or something that uh, not a lot of Korean DPs have tried in the industry. So, um, I, for example, also with the signature primes, um, it's something that I wanted to push the boundaries with, and that was part of the big reason why I also. Went with that set of uh, particular lenses. Great. So thank you. Um, yeah. So moving on to the next question, it's about the go-to focal lengths for Signature Prime. So I'd like to first ask Man Ching, um, which is your go-to focal length for the Signature Prime, and do you see yourself using a particular focal length mostly? Uh, 其實當中我拍呢套戲用得最多係誒三五啊，或者係四啊七。咁啊誒，佢嗰我中意佢嗰種彎嗰個感覺啊，拍演員佢好立體啊，喺佢個點好演繹佢個戲啊，點樣表露出嚟啊？你會好集中去睇佢點樣演繹啊？同埋誒用有陣時好多時地方細啊，用廿五鏡頭啊，或者係拳賽嗰啲。我佢廿五鏡頭地方細嘅好處就係佢唔會變形咯，冇 distortion， 唔會影響個畫面啊。後期公司啊最中意啦，因為你唔會變形啊嘛，佢唔使做好多做好多嘢喺佈景方面。Great, so yeah,、uh, I remember using 35 and 47 mostly、uh, when shooting with actors. It just really gives off a really good three-dimensional look.、Um, and also since the movie that we were talking about, it's called Knockout. Uh, it's a kind of a boxing movie, so、um, we used a lot the 25 in the boxing ring scenes. So, which which it was surprising because there was really no distortion at all. It was a wide angle. So like、um, uh, the CGI、uh, house love that because they don't have that much to correct.、Um, so like、um, th those are the focal go to focal lengths. So, Tay, what about you?、Um. Largely, I've been using the 47 mil a lot, especially with my short film Thanatos, with the with the short film because we use only one lens, which is the 47, and I we actually tested different、um, uh, uh, length for for the film, and then I find the 47 mil to be the perfect in terms of capturing、um, facial expressions and also at the same time, but also at the same time. Capturing、um, spaces and、um, it's it's it gives you a like、um, gives you a three D look and also it gives you a sense of、um, organic feel as well. Great, thanks. And Mr. Yu, for you. Super 35mm CMOS が가졌을때보다 Large Format 에서 47mm 를쓰면뭔가더안정적이면서안정적인형태로보여지게되더라고요그래서그걸굉장히좋아합니다 Um, my favorite is also 47mm、um, at the moment, and、uh, I realized from you know CMOS 35mm to to、uh, large format and using 47mm, it seems to stabilize the image. In in、uh, visually, and、uh, that seems to be、uh, quite comforting behind the camera, and also、um, just the fact that、uh, the effect it has somehow in in how、uh, balancing it, it it is in terms of even when especially you know large format situation with 47 millimeter, how the image looks really balanced and、um, really stabilized. 
uh, at the moment, because of those reasons, uh, 47 is my go-to choice. TVN 네. 지금 드라마의 모든 대사 씬을 네. 47mm 찍고 음. So and um, in on a TVN drama that that I recently uh, completed, uh, pretty much most of the dialogue scenes uh, have been shot with only 47mm. Um, Great! Wow, it's amazing that uh, 47 <laughs> is your favorite focal length for all three of you. That's that's yeah. amazing. That's really 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 interesting. I guess that's the best lens um, for the set. So um, now I wanted to ask the next question. I guess I'll, I'll go to Tay first, just to break it up. Um, I wanted to see how is large format picking up in your country? Like is, I suppose, same goes to the signature prize because they kind of go hand in hand. Um, uh, are most productions switching slowly from Super 35 to large format yet or? Um. Honestly, it's a, it's a big jump. Um, most of the time, not a lot of the productions in the Philippines can um, manage to get uh, a large format and large format lenses for their films. Uh, especially now with the pandemic, it's kind of a long stretch. And it, it's kind of hard now. But but the, we have a few feature films that act, that was actually shot in in large format uh, started that started last year um, were like a little bit of, little by little we're doing that kind of um, transition because of the requirements also for Netflix and um, for a 4K. Um, uh, out for 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 a feature film or a project, but I know you know you, you need um you need to have a, a bit of a budget to to be able to to afford it now. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess same in uh, I mean the the the, the change is happening quite rapidly in China because that's where I spend a lot of time. Um, but thank you for, for that. I, I guess uh, next I, I'd like to hear from Mr. Yu as well. For in college, how is it like in Korea switching to large format? Yeah, <laughs> 어, 많이 큰 이제 작품들이 천천히 정향되고 있는 건 사실입니다. Mm. So it's still a, a turbulent road. Um, however, with the with for example the the OTT services like Netflix uh, being so universal at the moment among general public in Korea, and um, how the contents from Korea are being um, exported to to overseas so rapidly, um, and and the productions having to meet certain quality. Um, the transition is happening, and uh, I see more and more uh, projects choosing LF over 35 uh, recently. Great, that's good to hear. Um, and also, how about Hong Kong, Manching? perspective. 有一種新鮮感跟以前十幾廿年前仲仲嘅譬如話個個靚子個景別唔同啊佢俾到你一種新鮮感因為而家觀眾睇睇誒佢要求高咗比以前變咗我哋鏡頭運用啊同埋你會
a different perspective. It, it could be a little bit subtle, uh, but I think the audience can pick it up. Um, that it's a something fresh, something different in the market. So uh, not to mention technically, uh, you know, shooting large format, you know, lends itself to an easier delivery for Netflix, an easier delivery for IMAX cinema. So uh, all these reasons, it makes the transition quite um, uh, imminent. So um, yeah, so that that is why I think uh, it's it's going to pick up what quite well, uh, switching from Super Thirty Five to uh, large format. Okay, thank you guys. So now let's move on to the questions that uh, you left uh, at the chat group. Um, now the first question from our audience uh, is from Omeya. Omeya left this question. It's for DPU. Uh, music videos in Korea are a different caliber. They just look different. They're, how different is the approach in terms of lensing, camera work, and framing composition for such projects. So first of all, um, the growth behind the quality of K-pop um, music videos are largely due to um, such collaborative efforts and um, different teams getting together. For example, um, one of the reasons I think the K-pop music videos were able to achieve such high quality and high standard throughout um, is because of um, such high demand and consumption. Um, people just watch a lot of music videos, they want more music videos, and the industry is getting bigger and bigger. And because of that, um, uh, in my opinion, music video sets in Korea are such a uh, highly collaborative effort. You have a team uh, that specializes in in um, the art directing, and also uh, what kind of vision the director has is, is very important. So uh, my ability to choose uh, camera lens or the camera movement or work um, has to go with how other teams are also seeing the project. So this is a very highly collaborative effort. And I think um, in approaching music videos in Korea, um, you always have to keep in mind that you will come across more and more collaborative effort. And that does affect um, um, my decision behind the camera work and, and lenses and, and everything else. Great, thanks. Yeah, that's very, very helpful. A very insightful study of the uh, music video industry there. So now our next, next question is from uh, viewer Carlos. Um, I guess there's a question for everyone. Uh, as you know that uh, the Signature Prime actually has a very unique function. It's called the magnetic filter holder. It's in the back of the lens. And um, Carlos wants to ask, did you guys ever try to use it? The rear magnetic filter holder which supposedly creates a very unique effect. Anyone? I have it actually. <laughs> okay, yeah, have you used it? Uh, we have yeah. used. Oh. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I have used and I'm, I'm continuing to, to use, the, use the feature. Holder에 쿠킹 오일도 발라보고 혹은 낚시줄을 걸어보고 그래서 뭔가 K 드라마도 되게 많기 때문에 조금 다른 특별한 것들을 만들고 싶어서 and I'm, I'm always uh, trying to customize uh, it for um, trying to achieve something different, trying to experiment with it. For example, I would hook up um, a fishing wire. I would put some kind of oil in order to um, um, try just something different. So for me, um, I'm actually using um, that feature that, that um, quite a lot. Was it good? How was your experience? <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, right. Oh, right. Did you make that yourself? Because uh, I think they encourage you to make it yourself. Top secret. Oh, top secret. Okay. Now it's not. <laughs> okay. Um, and any Tay and Manching, have you guys used it before? I don't know. 即係以前就誒就好似咁擠啲鏡喺鏡底啊，加加攞啲絲襪啊，攞啲好靚嘅絲襪去做，令到 soft 嘅。咁跟住因為而家唔係非諗之後咧，個後期太強大，所以現場都唔唔會搞咁多，即係做呢啲效果。Yeah. So for me, I haven't had chance to use it yet, but I heard about it. Um, because right now, like the producers, they don't want us to do much in the in the production stage. They want to save. Save all the effects on post, so they have more leeway in the in the post. But I'm looking forward to use it. And Tay, you haven't used it, have you? I haven't used it, but uh, yeah, maybe I can uh, experiment on it on the on, but not on the shooting proper. Uh, I'm gonna experiment on it. Great. Before. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Well, time time to bring out that stocking, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, like, uh, the next question is a very interesting one. It's from Gian Mo. Um, I like to ask that question myself. Have you ever used aerial shots or drone shots with the Signature Prime? Anyone? Oh no. No. Very expensive. Exactly. <laughs> I tell you why. I I have. Actually, on the film, it's interesting. On the film that I was involved with, um, uh, we actually had the signature prime up on the drone. It was very scary, but it, nothing happened. <laughs> uh, but I don't suppose it's any different. I mean, aside from uh, super being super scary. <laughs> um, okay, so sorry, nobody had that uh, used that before. Um, next one. Oh, okay. Last question. I think we're running out of time. Um, a few more minutes. Uh, wow, well, time flies. So, what's your last question to all our guests? What's your advice to aspiring cinematographers on how to fully utilize signature primes or on cinematography in general? So, this this is a question about aspiring cinematographers. Um, I guess. Why don't we go with uh, Mr. Yu? Do you want to address the uh, aspiring cinematographers in the audience? Um, <laughs> so, uh, it's very, uh, it, it's, it, you've got to do a lot. Um, you have to prepare a lot. You have to see um, not only a lot of movies, you have to see a lot of, uh, you have to consume and study a lot of contents. You have to see a lot of paintings, take a lot of pictures um, to, to begin with. However, um, what I think is most important is you're going to have a very rough time eventually to get to where you, you want to go. And the most important thing is, is having um, a, a teammate, having a partner that, that you can rely on in those rough times because it will be very rough and it will be very tough. And I'm fortunate to have those partners around me. And, you know, if you are looking for that partner, you can come to Korea, join Two Thumb Boys. And <laughs> Even even the panels, you're you're welcome to. <laughs> Great, thank you. Wow, that was a very heartfelt message. We'll we'll, we'll remember that. And Tay. Yeah, I, I will sign up for Mr. Yu's class. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, I think for the aspiring filmmakers right now, it's very important. Like what I said in my, I had a, a another talk like a few days ago that. Aspiring filmmakers right now should have hope. Hope uh, amidst all the things that is happening right now. Hope that um, you, you can do it. Um, like what Mr. Yu said, it's it's a, it's a rough journey for any filmmaker. It's um, 
uh, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of um, energy uh, and hope that things will happen if you really want it. So for the aspiring filmmakers out there, you just have to always learn hear from from webinars you have a lot of right now the 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 new filmmakers right now have a lot of access to books to paintings to the internet and there's an abundance of dps from all around the world talking about their craft and how they do their they've done their films so i think you just have to access them all and hope that and apply it as much as you can and hope that you can have a future you can have uh, you can you can you can make a film using an alexa lf and signature primes in the future yeah great thank you yes and Manching. 我想回应我的方案,你要用LFK系统的Stitchpan的摄影师,当你准备拍这些摄影师,你要跟他说,你要跟他说,你要跟他说,你要跟他说,你要跟他说,你要跟他说,你要跟他说,你要跟他说,你